Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to continue if you live with the Cherokee, but first let's review our words. We have the short U sound, cub, bump, and then our long U sound, three different ways U consonant E, UE, and EW. Rule, mule, tune, do, glue, true, brew, chew, new, screw. Okay, those are our words for this week. All right, now we're going to add our very first vocabulary word for this week, and it's decorate. And if you decorate, you do something to make it look nicer. Like before school started, I would decorate my classroom to make it look like a nicer place for y'all. Um, if you had a special box that you keep all your treasures in, you might decorate it to try to make it look nicer. All right, we'll see how this fits in today. All right. So today we are going to continue with If You Lived with a Cherokee by Peter and Connie Group. What would you look like? If you were Cherokee, the color of your skin might be light tan to dark tan. Your hair would be black and straight. You would be slim because of the games you played and the work you did. If you were a girl, you rarely cut your hair. For the Cherokee, long hair was beautiful hair. When your hair was long enough, you tied it up. Boys and men shaved or plucked their hairs that only a small patch was left on top. And here's a picture of Cherokee there feeding a raccoon. But you see, she has long hair, and then he has just a little patch of hair. What did you wear? Before the new settlers came, your clothes were made from animal skins. In the summer, children under the age of eight didn't have to worry about clothes. They wore nothing in the warm months. Men and older boys wore deerskin shirts and breech clouts. A breech clout was a band of deerskin that hung from the belt at a waist. Women and older girls wore deerskin skirts wrapped around their waists. All right, so here's a picture of what it looked like. In the wintertime, men and boys wore animal skins such as bear, panther, and beaver with the fur on the inside for warmth. They wore moccasins on their feet and long deerskin leggings. Women and girls wore skirts made from buffalo calf skin with the hair on the inside. They wore deerskin shirts decorated with small turkey feathers. And here's a picture. And if you look closely, you can see the, the turkey feathers. And so they put that on there to make it look nicer. Women and girls wore jewelry around their necks, wrists, and ankles. You made your own jewelry from shells, seeds, bone, animal, teeth, stones, and feathers. Men like to wear armbands of leather or copper and hair decorations such as feathers. Cherokee people also used shell beads, stone discs, porcupine quills, feathers, and animal hair to decorate their clothes. Cherokee clothes changed when the Cherokee began trading with the new white settlers. Shirts and skirts were made from the cloth of animal skin, were made from cloth instead of animal skins. Glass beads from Spain and France were used to decorate clothing. Okay. All right. Who was in your family? You would live with your mother and father and brothers and sisters and your mother's parents but you would belong to an even larger family called a clan. There were seven clans, bird, wolf, deer, wild potato, long hair, blue, and paint. Members of each clan lived in every village. Your mother and father belonged to different clans. You would be a part of your mother's clan, not your father's. If your mother was a bird and your father was a paint, you would be a bird. Your relatives were your mother's family, her mother, grandmother, aunts, sisters, brothers, and cousins. Okay, and you can see how their clothing started to change, and then you can see this represents the different clans. 
How did people get married? To get married, your two families exchanged special gifts. The groom would send deer meat to the girl's family. This proved he was a good hunter and would always provide his wife with food. The bride gave him an ear of corn to show she would tend to her gardening and she could prepare good food. After the wedding ceremony, the man moved into the woman's house with her family. To get divorced, the Cherokee woman had only to put her husband's things outside the door to their house. That meant he had to move away. It was forbidden to marry someone from your own clan. Okay, and here they're showing this picture. Okay, and see she's showing him with her corn that she'll be a good gardener and take care of the stuff. All right, now, interesting concept here. Okay, so when they got married, they moved in with the woman, with the woman's family, and your relatives seems to be from the female side of the family, not from your father's side, which is interesting and a little bit different from how we do things today because today we have family members from both sides, right? And if they wanted to get divorced, she just had to throw stuff out of the house and say, I'm done. It's an interesting way to do it. But that's what it was like 200 years ago if you lived with the Cherokee. We'll read more tomorrow to find out what happens next. Thanks for listening.